Aloha. It's February the 23rd, 2022. Welcome to What Now America. I'm your host, Tim Apicella. Today's title is Congress, No Stocks for You. A ban on all stock trading proposed. Um, back in 2008, a very influential lobbyist, probably one of the most inf influential lobbyists that uh, Washington DC maybe has ever known by the name of Jack Abramoff. And um, Mr. Abramoff uh, pled guilty to uh, fraud, conspiracy, and uh, a whole host of other things, but he did serve time. And what Jack Abramoff did was literally apply millions and millions of dollars and spread them out to re representatives and senators in Washington DC um, in the form of trips, campaign donations, meals, entertainment, golf trips. And um, a lot of people were caught up in that. And they, they suddenly didn't want to be a friend of Jack Amramoff, but uh, they were. And it took some time, but years later, uh, 2012, the Stop Trading on Congressional Knowledge Act was passed, uh, or otherwise known as the Stock Act. And uh, a, very in, you know, a very ineffective bill, but uh, it's, it is law of the land. And now in 2022, we have 57 different representatives and senators who have been caught in violation of the act. And the act basically is very simple. You have to disclose your, your stock purchase and sale transactions, and you have to do it within a timely manner. And we have people such as uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein, uh, Tubby, Tubby, uh, Tommy Tuberville of Alabama, Rand Paul, Mark Kelly of Arizona, uh, 57 different representatives and senators have been caught in violation. And what's happening now is there is a very strong synergy to enact a, a prohibit, you know, pro prohibit all stock trading for all members of Congress. And I find this very strange and certainly worthy of a topic to discuss. So let us, uh, let us go to our guests, Jay Fidel, Cynthia Lee Sinclair, and Karen Buzzard to join us to talk about this discussion. Good morning, everyone. Morning, Tim. Jay, to you first. You know, the GOP has said that the January 6th is a nothing burger and the, the impeachments were nothing and they were trumped up and against Trump. And we have the suppression laws for voting, for voting rights. That's a nothing burger, according to the GOP. Um, we have all these things that they choose not to pay attention to. And then lo and behold, we have strong bipartisan support for this proposed bill that will stop all stock trading for members of Congress. Why this, why this bill that gets now strong bipartisan support to stop trading? Why this versus all these other important things that they, uh, they don't want to acknowledge? Two things come to mind. I really don't know the answer, but um, you know, one thing is um, they want to show bipartisanship. So this is a demonstration that doesn't really cost much to do. Um, the, the second thing is um, invidious comparison. Uh, some of those uh, legislators have the money to do the stock trading and others don't. Some of them have the knowledge to do the stock trading and others don't. Some of them have done, maybe are now doing the stock trading and others haven't. Um, I, I really don't know the answer. It's all bizarre. It's, uh, it, I was thinking a week ago that um, it's, um, there's a certain strange bipartisanship about supporting Biden in Ukraine. Um, that seems to have dissipated and the GOP has um, you know, gotten its act together to criticize him as usual. So who's to say, um, you tell me now that there's a, a move that's bipartisan to stop stock trading in the Congress. Um, how about a week from now, Tim, Good when the point. GOP gets its act together on that point, they'll be opposing any rational, useful, honest uh, approach, including this one. You know, when this um, 2012, it was called actually the formal name was the Stop Trading on Congressional Information or Congressional Knowledge Act, um, truncated to the Stock Act. But uh, the bipartisan support on that was amazing. Uh, back then, the Senate 96 to 3 and the House 417 to 2, it passed. 
Uh, but from all the reports I hear, I mean, these bills are, are co-sponsored and there seems again uh, to be a lot of energy behind it. But you and I have talked and this group has talked about the fact that there will be nothing other than maybe the budget resolutions that have to be passed or else we default on our debt, but there will be nothing coming out of Congress that is in any way beneficial to um, Democrats and certainly Joe Biden. But here we go. This one's coming forward. In fact, um, you know, Asa from Georgia, remember he was uh, replaced, he replaced, uh, and Mark Kelly from Arizona, uh, they seem to have a very strong bill and, and it's gonna take time to modify and, and edit, but there, there it is. It probably will pass. I'm reminded of section 318, 318 of the Internal Revenue Code, which is a definition of attribution. So you don't have to do anything bad, but your family, what your family does is attributed to you. And there are degrees of sanguinity involved in section 318. Uh, and the same thing here, and maybe to further answer your question a moment ago, maybe they think this is not going to be enforceable or enforced. Um, and, um, you know, they may be right. Uh, I, I can do stock trading through my wife, my niece, my uncle, my aunt, my cousin, and uh, uh, it'll, it'll help me a lot. Um, so uh, I don't know what the bill says. You say it's strong. Well, let, so let, me sure. just, let me make a different uh, a distinction between two proposed bills. You know, there's been a lot of bills in the last year about this, but two specifically, and the one with Ossoff and Mark Kelly, that is a, to um, place all stocks in a qualified blind trust. Uh, that's one bill, a proposal. The other one is from uh, Elizabeth Warren and Steve Daines, a Republican from Montana, and that is the prohibition of stock transactions from not only yourself as a member of Congress, but also the spouses and children of, of that family and a uh, stiff $50,000 penalty if a violation occurs. Okay, well, that's attribution. That's good to hear. I don't know about the blind trust. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe not. I mean, there was a blind trust rule or norm for Trump and he completely abandoned it. He completely ignored it during his administration in office. But you know, one thing that strikes me is what these guys care about is being embarrassed. And there has been a failure on the part of the media to regularly follow. You know, it's, it's interesting. Now you have a list of all these people who have been caught stock trading right now today. Somebody had to um, achieve that list. Somebody could find that information. And I'm sure it's not that hard. I mean, all, all four of us could go and do that, I suppose. Um, but you don't see the media doing it regularly. I mean, there ought to be um, a page in the Times or any you know, print newspaper every week, every day, every month, whatever the iteration would be, uh, reporting all the stock trades that are public record for these guys. And maybe some op-ed pieces saying, well, um, you know, there was a move that Congress made about I'm just making this up, technology companies. And lo and behold, all these guys uh, sold their stock or bought their stock in technology companies a few days before. Does that smell? Um, and the public should know that. I think the media, the media has not really paid attention to this. It's one thing for a $50,000 fine where, you know, that may or may not happen. And the attorney general may or may not do anything about it. You remember him, Merrick Garland? Uh, I, I hardly remember him anymore. Um, but, but, you know, the problem is um, it's very hard to enforce and there are not agencies out there that will enforce it. But the media, the media can put it out in a double fold and they can comment on it and they can embarrass these people. Even from red states, these people will be embarrassed because people in general, they don't like government making money off their jobs. Uh, they don't like corruption. You know, you guys, I want to be, I don't want to be the first guy on the block, but this is corruption. Uh, when they, when they vote for a bill or against a bill based on insider information and Congress is loaded with in, inside information, that is old fashioned corruption. It reminds me of the sicko movie. I don't know if you remember the sicko movie, uh, Michael Moore, it was about healthcare in the United States. Oh yeah. And he pointed out, um, and he named names, a number of Congress people in the Senate. Um, who uh, were sitting on health committees and voted for or against health bills for years. Okay? And uh, as soon as their term was up, lo and behold, they would regularly get jobs 
with these big health agencies and be paid hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars for those jobs immediately after their terms were up. I wonder what happened there. That is corruption. Michael Moore pointed it out, but you know, I haven't seen a lot in the press about it. The media has to get involved in this and it has to come in swinging. Excellent points, Jay. Excellent <laughs> points, especially about the um, Affordable Care Act before it became a law. Uh, Karen, to you, um, number one, part A of this question is, do you think this, this action or this, this movement to ban all stock trading for uh, Congress people uh, a, is that a good idea? And B, what do you think's behind it? What do you think, why all of a sudden there's a bipartisanship support for this potential law that could be passed? Uh, well, maybe I'm just unduly suspicious. I'm wondering, some of them go further than others. Like there's a new one, uh, the Stock, two, Stock Act 2 proposed by Gillibrand, or Gillibrand who uh, says it also should extend to the Supreme Court and to the Federal Reserve and to all members and relatives of, you know, so it goes further than uh, just the members of Congress. So I'm wondering if it's just because they want to pass one that doesn't go as far, see who could be the, you know, and still gets credit for it. In other words, if Gillibrand's process and it would go a lot further than, say, um, Ossoff's or even uh, there's one out by Josh Hawley, uh, you know, so because that just targets members of Congress. Also, I think the other issue with the uh, first stock act was it basically just gave you a slap on the hand. It, there was no mm -hmm. real penalty for violating it. I think it was $50 or something, but in the meantime, they're making, raking in millions of dollars. So, you know, what kind of penalty is that? So there is an attempt to put, I think a $50,000 penalty, but even that, if you're making millions of dollars, maybe you'd be willing to pay, you know, 50,000 to make them several million. No, well, you know, the, the, those who have been caught in the violation of this, um, there's 57 members of Congress, both as the Senate and the House of Representatives. Um, they cite clerical errors or their staff didn't properly do it or their accountants didn't file properly. Uh, what does it say about Congress when you have 57 members currently in violation of a federal act? I mean, I think they know the law. I mean, they're not stupid. So I don't think that's a, a proper excuse. It's unethical behavior and they're taking advantage of insider trading knowledge. I mean, that's the basis of all of this. Well, very much so. I mean, if it was um, a private citizen, I think if the SEC caught wind of it, there'd be an investigation. So here we have members of Congress that s serve on these committees, uh, a lot of it was sensitive information. For example, uh, Richard Burr, Senator Burr from North Carolina, he was sitting on an uh, intelligence committee. And lo and behold, just uh, days before the COVID uh, shutdown, he invested uh, $628,000 to $1.7 million of his own personal funds in hotel stocks and teleworking uh, stocks. And he made a lot of money. And I believe he's under investigation right now, too. Isn't he is he? a good point. Yes, he's under investigation. So perhaps um, maybe that's the first bug under the rock that's now been uh, exposed. And maybe out of this 57, uh, there's others to follow. You know, Nancy Pelosi thought it was no big deal, a nothing burger. And her quote directly was, uh, it's a free market economy and they should be able to participate in that. That's the Speaker of the House. Well, her husband was one of the ones that cleaned up in the stock market. Uh, so there were three kind of culprits that brought this to a head. Kelly Loeffler, uh, her husband, and um, the um, uh, one you mentioned. So basically, uh, I think that it there, uh, was so egregious that it sort of brought it to a head uh, how bad things were. But her husband, who um, basically, I think he made over a hundred million uh, yeah. Well, actually, yeah. hang on here. Um, oh, that was Pelosi's husband that made 5.3 million in Five perfectly million. timed stock trades. Couldn't have been any perfect timing. 5.3 million. So it's interesting that she's against, uh, you know, uh, any attempts to hold uh, accountable the ethical behavior of the senator. Well, she's done a 180, though, Karen. Uh, she now is in full support of. Um, any of these proposed bills that are on the floor, either by uh, Senator, or by Josh Hawley or or Elizabeth Warren or um, uh, 
Mark Kelly in Ossoff. She's now in full support of them. Well, they probably should make uh, the law sort of retroactive for a few years because to clean up the, if they really want to clean it up, they need to hold a people accountable that, you know, benefited on the insider trading since uh, the COVID started, because that mm. seemed to be one of, a lot of it. Well, it's hard to make laws uh, retroactive. <laughs> Uh, there's a constitutional issue on that, but you know the, the problem. I mean, all this discussion suggests that there there really is no enforcement. Uh, whether the, the bill is old or new, soft or hard, um, nobody's enforcing it. You know, and, we get our that, tails tied in means... We we get our tails tied in the saying that you know the GOP is ignoring the rule of law. Yet here's the rule of law in force, and everyone's ignoring it. Yeah. Uh, and nobody's doing anything about it. Where is the Department of Justice on this? If you want to have an investigation, a, pr a prosecution, they have to be involved, and they're not. Good points. All right. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Karen. S Cynthia, to you, um, kind of the same question. What do you think about this proposal, and why do you think it's uh, gaining the synergy that it's gaining? Um, is it a smoking gun, and more are going to be wrapped up into this, and they'll have an answer? Um, to any future investigations by the media that uh, someone's involved or what do you think? I think it's long overdue. I think enforcement is the key to all of this. And without it, it's, it's all about accountability when it comes to corruption. If they're not held accountable, it's just going to keep going on. And yeah, they made millions, all of them made millions when they knew the pandemic was going to hit and everybody changed their stocks, they unloaded the stuff they didn't want and they, you know, bought up all the stuff low that they knew was going to skyrocket because of it. There's a really good article um, in TNR by Jason Lincoln about this very subject. And, and he says that in 2002, he went to work for the Wall Street Journal and they have strict rules in the same way. You cannot trade stocks and be a reporter. And it makes sense because, you know, of course, you're going to give the stories to the people you want and, and that sort of stuff. And it's the same sort of, you know, side handing everything around. And I think that's what's kind of going on. I'm, I'm hoping maybe I caught a positive buzz from Winston. And since he's not here today, I'll, I'll try to bring a positive bent to some of this. Maybe what's happening and the reason we're having this wonderful bipartisan approach, it's the Republicans and the Democrats alike. And 62% of Americans, both Democrat and Republican alike, are for this that, you know, let's get this under control. Maybe it's because they found something they can all come together on. Well, you know, that's, I love, I love that thinking. And I, I like to think that's the case, but you know, what about voting suppression? I mean, 62% of Americans or, or higher think that uh, these voting suppression bills are out of line, yet here they are. <laughs> Yes. Well, I, think, I think no. I think that's really important, Tim. And what and what we have here is um, uh, I should have said this earlier: a distraction. This is a distraction. We have the world falling apart. We have the country falling apart. Democracy falling apart. Voting falling apart. Immigration falling apart. The social safety net is falling, falling, falling apart. And we're talking about um, doing the windows and baseboards. Um, mm -hmm. This is a distraction. It's not important. Okay. Cynthia, are you are you on that same page as Jay? I think that's a good point. Yeah, because we always have to remember that distractions, that's the, you know, the heart of their MO is to keep everybody looking over here so you don't look over here, right? That whole side handing thing that I was talking about before. Um, absolutely. I, I think that that's very possible. And it's just, like I said, a hopeful uh, whim, I guess. I keep thinking, well, maybe they found something they can come together on. I keep hoping they'll find something to come together on, whatever it is. You know, going to the, the point that Jay made and Karen and you, and that is, this is corruption. You know, this the lobbyist attempts to um, influence legislation. 
uh, there are, you know, be it trips or meals or entertainment. Um, we call it corruption, but if it's not against the law, is it corruption? Jay, well, to you, or no, Cynthia, to you on that point. It is against the law. <laughs> That's the thing. I mean, there is an act that says you can't do it. So it is against the law. They just have conveniently decided they don't want to follow it because they're making millions and millions of dollars. And I remember back in the day when, you know, politicians had to lock everything away. They couldn't have, make any money at all while they were working or else they got no pay at all while they were um, politicians, right? They had to have another job. <laughs> and I wonder, can we like put that back in there somewhere where they, they have to, they don't get any money from the taxpayers. At least we're not paying them while they're making millions. You know, something, anything that we can do, I'm, I'm for. Let's shut them down and start holding people accountable because corruption is rampant. Okay. Can I take, a, can I take yeah. that a little further, Tim? Yes, of course. A um, couple of points. Uh, one is, you know, I've wondered over the past few years why these uh, GOP guys like to stay in office so much so that they'll do anything to stay in office, not be primaried by Trump and his friends. Okay. <clears throat> I say, well, is it that big a deal to be a congressman? I mean, go out and get a job, you guys. You don't have to be in Congress. Um, what does a congressman get paid? You must know, Karen, 150000 something uh, like that. 175? No, Nancy, Nancy Pelosi gets 225,000. Well, she's a top dog. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's I think, just somewhere... I think it's 175,000. Okay. I may be right. wrong on that. Okay. In, in the world of executive, in the world of influence, the world of business, it's not that much. If they lose that job, you know, it's not a total disaster, especially if they've been in Congress before. They can parlay, you know, their experience in Congress into the market. And so I think. I think this factors into um, this whole thing about why they don't want to lose their jobs. Mm. It's not the 150 or 175,000. It's the 5 million or more that they care about. And they're not going to have the inside information if they're out of Congress, if they're primaried out. This is part of the way they see their compensation. So okay, um, it's I go way to my beyond, point. The, way beyond. So, I mean, even if you said, okay, we found you, we caught you with your hand in the cookie jar, and now we're going to stop your 175. And I says, okay, that's okay with me. I make 5 million anyway, have a nice life. Uh, so, this is the, you know, this is the point it, of the topic of my show and why <laughs> a bill that's going to kill the gravy train. I mean, why are they gung ho on this when clearly they could be making $5 million on the side and probably have been? Well, I think it's A, because of enforceability, real problem. Um, B, because uh, they, um, you know, they, as, as I mentioned before, um, there's a corruption here. I mean, just as we have a corruption in the Hawaii state legislature, which is only now beginning to yeah. reveal itself, you know, the, the rock has been turned and there are two, three guys out of government who are pleading guilty, what have you. And by the way, they're not pleading guilty to the full charge. I hope you notice that. Um, so that's a strange deal. Who knows what's going on there? We need to know more. Um, but it reflects a corruption in the legislature and in government in Hawaii. And now this reflects a huge moral failure in Congress. You would have thought that when uh, Mr. Smith, was it Smith, who goes to Washington, um, is, you know, as pure as the driven snow and wants to help the country and would never, ever do anything like this. Now we find that it's, it's just, it's endemic all over Congress and probably mm, courts too. I don't know which ones. Um, and, and I would vote for that bill that, that put, that put the kibosh on, on inside trading by, by the courts, including, especially the courts, including especially Justice Kavanaugh, who I just look deeply in his eyes, and I, I, I wonder about that. Uh, in any event, um, what, what, what I'm saying is that uh, this all reflects a, a moral corruption. We have it. We have the pox, and we really have to do a lot of work to get rid of it. If I can, you know, Karen, um, go ahead, Cynthia. Sorry, it's it's not the 
the millionaire guys, though, that are bringing this to the forefront. It's the ones that aren't corrupt that are bringing it. So okay. I, I right. that's an important distinction to make. Good point. Karen, I, I'm going, I can't quite get off this point because, you know, if it's a daily occurrence where lobbyists are applying their trade, their trade craft to our, our House of Representatives and our senators in Washington, D.C., um, why isn't that being tackled versus the Stop Trading Act? Um, say the first part of your question again. I wasn't well, quite... the question is, if, if lobbyists uh, get to apply their trade craft to all the representatives and senators in Washington, D.C., and that seems to be unchecked either by the media or, or by the Department of Justice, um, shouldn't that be the area of concern that they should be looking at versus a stock prohibition, uh, new new uh, new law that uh, addresses stock trading? Uh, absolutely. I think the lobbyists are a huge part of the problem, but uh, I believe the Supreme Court gave them kind of free license with their- um, Citizens United citizens. or- Yeah, so I'm not sure, uh, to be honest, how they can handle that. And I did read there is a bill uh, to try to pass legislature which would um, basically uh, eliminate Citizens United Act through the Congress. Somebody has proposed it so they can do away with that kind of uh, lobbying and uh, unchecked money and uh, private donors and uh, anonymity. But um, I think it is being proposed. I, don't, I forgot who it is. Karen, I want to make you a, a side bet on that one. Don't take it, Karen. Uh, if, that, if that passes, you have to buy me a pizza. <laughs> Don't okay. do it, Karen, because he's, he's collecting pizzas all over the place. <laughs> well, Karen, let me ask you this. Does this bill pass? Jay's Jay, uh, early comment was, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of hype about it, but uh, when it comes down to vote time, they won't be anywhere, the GOP won't be anywhere to be found on this. Do you agree with Jay's initial comment about that? I think, uh, like Josh, I think they're competing to who can come in with the most watered down version of it. <laughs> <laughs> so like Elizabeth Warren is, you know, holding the line, you know, we have to go after everybody and all the relatives and, and there has to be severe penalties. And then Josh Howley, no, just the senators should be, you know, in other words, your wives and your children could do the same thing. So uh, that's my unfortunately cynical theory that um, they're seeing uh, if they can, if it has to pass, they'd rather have a sort of watered down version with very little penalties like the one they have now like the like the existing 2012 yeah. version yeah, exactly yeah yeah okay you, you can be even more cynical though um what <laughs> part of your part of your i mean i'm into cynicism as you know part of your uh, your write-up tim reflected and your points a minute ago reflected that nancy pelosi uh, did 5.3 million dollars or her uh, husband uh, her husband, her husband it's to me that's the same thing yeah. i mean it's it's not that oh gee how did that get into my account isn't that marvelous i should wake up in the morning one day with 5.3 million in my account and not know about it you mean um, our new palm springs home was purchased from a stock trade that i didn't know about <laughs> see so what this might be is a step transaction kind of thing where the gop says yeah let's do something bipartisan and in the middle of their effort to get it passed all of a sudden, they start attacking Nancy Pelosi and do her up in the press right. over her 5.3 million. And it's all addressed to her and possibly other Democratic uh, representatives. OK, well, before we go around the table for last thought, Cynthia, um, by chance, is this any kind of um, gateway open to a renewed effort to look at uh, Build Back Better or the voting voting rights bill that are seem to be stalled and languishing and certainly i'm going to lose a pizza bet over it and i'm never taking the, that bet again with jay fidel ever again <laughs> <laughs> what do you think uh, cynthia you know i have hope and and you know it's important for all of our government officials to be ethical and behave ethically right but it's even more important that people, that just the American people, believe that our government is ethical, right? So there's a, a perception in there that's important also. And so 
I, I don't think this is going to have any effect on voting or Build Back Better or any of that. But I'm hoping that what it can do is start to drill away at some of the corruption. And we've talked a lot about Nancy Pelosi and a couple other names around here today, but there's one giant name we have not mentioned, and that is Mitch McConnell. Good old Moscow Mitch and his wife, who has, what did she make? It was a billion dollars or something in the last three years. So, you know, it's, it's definitely a problem that goes across and needs to be delineated so that they know where the parameters are. It's not just sort of a general rule. It's specific with specific um, accountability. All righty. Well, remember the old saying, it's not the love of money is the root of all evil. It's the love of money is the root of all evil. <laughs> so, okay. Um, last thoughts, Jay, let's go to you and uh, we'll go around the table here. Yeah, um, um, we haven't talked too much about Trump and, and um, I'm, I'm really uh, astounded where uh, the MSNBC did a little survey of remarks he made about killing people. Uh, and, and someone uh, charged uh, Putin with uh, a being a murderer and killing people. And, um, and Trump's um, response to that was, the United States kills people too. Yeah, I remember that. Which is an astounding remark that he made. Yeah. Um, and so the same thing here. Um, I, I think that, um, that what's going to happen is the focus is not going to be on corruption. It's going to wind up being on those who did the insider trading, including Democratic um, members of Congress. And I think that uh, that actually helps Trump because uh, he'll say, well, you know, there's corruption everywhere. This is the swamp I was talking about. Um, it, 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 it falls in his camp. This whole issue falls in his camp and he will use it to say government is screwed up and I alone can fix it. Um, and, and that's where this is going to wind up, not with a, a, a dampening of corruption, but with a, a gift, a political gift to Trump. All right. Karen, your last thing thinking on this. this uh, well, I think, you know, the old saying out of darkness light, there needs to be some kind of government um, agency that keeps track every year of, you know, what people are making in the stock market and it be visible to the public, they can go to the site and they can see that you know, Nancy Pelosi made, you know, five million dollars or whatever it was, you know, just so uh, there's a tracking uh, uh, of each congressperson and they're held accountable. And you know, uh, and when it comes to campaigning, then those numbers can be, you know, brought up and people can see how corrupt they are. All right, thank you for your thoughts, Cynthia. You get the last word with your your thoughts. Karen just said gets my vote. I think that's exactly right. And there's been a few articles that I read while I was getting ready for the show that talk about that very thing, that there needs to be an agency and there needs to be more, um, you know, transmissibility that we can actually see what's happening. In what's wrong with the media? I'm sorry to interrupt your last thought, but what's wrong with the media? Thank you. Exactly. The media, but the media... <laughs> Right now, the media is, I'm not sure why they're being so, uh, okay, don't take it wrong when I say it's pussyfooting around everything, you know? <laughs> um, Trump came out yesterday and called Putin a genius, and we've hardly even heard about it on the news anywhere. So, um, you know, he, he was giddy about what he had done in calling those places um, you know, to to put out those things as independent um, places where he was able to go in. And he's, is he going to just try to inch his way in? You know, you, that's what I was, when I see the map all the time, I think, oh boy. So I'm getting off track because I'm going to Putin and Ukraine and I'm, I'm terribly worried. And, and I really, regardless, we're all talking about sanctions and stuff and things, and Putin's going to kill people. People are going to die. And that's what we need to look at and think about. But here at home, and I know I'm going all over the map here, but we're still losing 2,000 people a day. 
a day to COVID. Those okay. are some statistics that are pretty staggering. And everybody needs to wake up, pay attention, get involved. Excellent points. All right. Well, thank you, Cynthia. We've, we've run out of time. And I'd like to thank our guests here for What Now America, Jay Fidel, Karen Buzzard, and Cynthia Lee Sinclair. Join us next Wednesday at 11 o'clock for What Now America. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host, and we hope to see you next week. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.